a lot of you guys in my audience don't really like the NBA anymore. You guys like to bash the NBA in the comments section, and you're not alone, to be honest. Myself, me, I have been highly critical of the NBA for damn near a year now. Now, I love the NBA. I really do. Obviously, nothing in sports tops my love of the NFL. There's nothing better than an NFL Sunday, watching NFL Red Zone and betting on all the games. I'm not going to say that the NBA comes close to that, but it really is the next best thing in sports, in my opinion, to the NFL. I mean, seriously, who the hell watches Major League Baseball anymore? I can't get into college basketball until March Madness. College basketball, to me, is on life support. There is a serious lack of star power in college basketball. Before Zion Williamson, a couple of years ago, can anybody name the last mainstream superstar in college basketball? I mean, damn, you probably would have to go all the way back to the 1990s. There is a stain on the public image of the NBA right now, and I'm not here to defend them. They did it to themselves. For one, the NBA needs a new commissioner. Adam Silver is clearly over his head. He is not a leader. David Stern built the NBA into a powerhouse with the help of Michael Jordan. We can sit and argue all day long about who is the bigger star, Michael Jordan or LeBron James. But the fact that you can't argue, when Michael Jordan was in the NBA, David Stern was in charge, not Michael Jordan. One of you guys commented on one of my NBA videos the other day. I think it was the one I did on Draymond Green. And you said that LeBron James is the one that's running the league right now, not Adam Silver. I can't remember who said it. I wish I could. It was a regular listener, but whoever it was, you were 100% right. LeBron James runs the NBA, not Adam Silver. Adam Silver sat by last year and allowed LeBron James to, to be honest, he tanked the league. He allowed him to rally the players down the black hole of woke politics, which is mind-numbing when you think about it. Colin Kaepernick showed everyone back in 2016 what politics can do to a sports league. Ratings for the NFL tanked when Colin Kaepernick and other NFL players started to kneel for the national anthem. Now, compared to what the NBA did last year, Colin Kaepernick was minimal. And it still tanked the NFL's ratings by 20-plus percent. So if it happened to the most popular sports league in the country, what made Adam Silver and LeBron James think that it wouldn't happen to the NBA? Fans showed you last year, they don't need the NBA. Adam Silver allowed NBA players to take what Colin Kaepernick and other NFL players did and multiply it by a thousand. It was absolutely ridiculous what the NBA did last summer. Now, to their credit, they have pretty much removed politics from the league this year, and ratings are going back up. But I bring all of this up for a reason. I've been calling out the NBA for a while over all the negatives. So when I see something positive like I did Monday night, I feel it's only fair to bring it to your guys' attention. Because judging by your comments, most of you guys have completely given up on the NBA. Maybe you missed what I'm about to talk about, but if I'm going to criticize the league on the negatives, it's only fair that I praise them on the positives, or at least LeBron James in this case. Let me start by asking you this. If you could name one of the biggest problems in the NBA right now, besides the fact that Many of the superstars in the league think they're political activists instead of basketball players. What would be one of the biggest problems in the NBA right now? It's not hard if you think about it. Something people talk about all the time. One of the biggest problems in the NBA is the regular season doesn't matter. The audience doesn't feel like the regular season matters. Unless you're a diehard fan of the New Orleans Pelicans like I am, are you going to watch a game in the middle of February between the Pelicans and the Detroit Pistons? No, you're not. You're going to go hit up a bar, watch Netflix, or get on top of your girlfriend. You're going to do something else. The NBA regular season isn't appointment television. It's a real problem. You can have the Lakers play in the Bucks or the Clippers Saturday night in prime time, and they'll draw two, maybe two and a half million people. Why is it that way? Why does the audience think that the regular season doesn't count? 
because the players have conditioned them to think that way. So when I see what LeBron James is doing this season and what he said Monday night, I've got to respect it. After the Lakers lost in overtime to the Wizards on Monday night, a game in which LeBron played over 40 minutes, fourth time in February that he's played over 40 minutes in a game, LeBron was asked by someone in the media if he needed to rest. Basically, if it would be smart for him to start sitting out some of these regular season games. And to LeBron's credit, he called out this whole narrative that he needed to start missing games for rest. Check out what he said. Quote, I think this whole narrative of LeBron needs more rest, or I should take more rest, or I should take time here, it's become a lot bigger than what it actually is. I've never talked about it. I don't talk about it. I don't believe in it. We all need more rest. This is a fast turnaround from last season, and we all wish we could have more rest, but I'm here to work. I'm here to punch my clock in and be available to my teammates. End quote. (laughs) Finally. Finally, someone in the NBA gets it. Salute to LeBron James for leading by example in a positive way this time instead of a political way like he did last summer. I wish every superstar in the NBA felt like LeBron James. Maybe then more people would be interested in watching the regular season. I mean, think about this. If anybody in the NBA right now has an excuse to miss regular season games, it's LeBron James. You win the NBA Finals in October. You got a quick turnaround. Regular season starts late December. Camp started late November, early December. He's 36 years old, 18th year in the league. He has absolutely nothing left to prove to anybody. If LeBron James wanted to sit out a regular season game in February to rest, especially this season, I don't think anybody would have anything to say about it. He refuses to do so. Why? Why? Well, one, he loves the game of basketball, but two, it's because these regular season games do matter to LeBron James. They matter. And other superstar level players in the NBA need to start treating the regular season like it counts. You know, this mentality from NBA players that the regular season doesn't matter, it hasn't always been the case. You hear guys like Charles Barkley call out today's NBA players all the time for load management and for being soft. Load management is garbage, in my opinion. Sometimes I feel like we get paralysis by analysis. Analytics aren't always a good thing. Michael Jordan played 15 years in the NBA. Like LeBron James, Michael Jordan was an international phenomenon. When he wasn't playing in the NBA, it was the Olympics or movies or endorsements interviews, you name it. Jordan was always busy. The dude never stopped. In 15 years, you know how many times Michael Jordan played more than 75 games in a season? 12. And two of those years that he didn't, he was injured. And it was 1995 when he returned to the Bulls late that year, coming back from baseball. Michael Jordan played all 82 games in a season nine times. He was the most important player in the league, but he showed up every night. Every night he was on the court. There wasn't this mentality of, oh, I'm a star. I don't need to play against the Cavs on a Tuesday night in February. No, Jordan was there every night. Charles Barkley played 75 games seven times, but a lot of his time missed was due to injury, not load management. My point is, These guys that we grew up watching in the 90s treated the regular season like it mattered. Now, on the other hand, Kawhi Leonard has been in the league 10 years, never played 75 games in a season. His lone season in Toronto, coming off a season where he played nine games in San Antonio, where he essentially sat out the season because he wanted out. His lone season with the Raptors, he played 60 games. Missed 25% of the season to rest. Hell, he had an entire year to rest with the Spurs. Kyrie Irving, 10 years in the league, played 75 games once. My point is, this is a mentality issue amongst players in the NBA. A mentality issue, I believe that LeBron James is leading by example to try and correct. A guy who has played 75 plus games 12 out of 18 years. 
A guy who has led the league in minutes played three times. It boggles my mind how anybody in the media could even pose the question to LeBron about getting more rest. Members of the media have been complaining for years about the NBA regular season not counting. And here you have a guy busting his balls every night and you ask him if it's better for him to rest instead of play? Good for LeBron James. I'll never say he's better than Michael Jordan. I grew up in the 90s. Jordan will always sit atop the NBA mountain, at least in my eyes. I can say that LeBron James shares the same mentality as Michael Jordan. That every game counts. You play for the love of the game. And if you're healthy, if you're 50%, 75%, you play. Rest isn't in your vocabulary. I wish and I really hope other players in the league will follow LeBron's example. Because I think another one of the problems in the NBA, at least in terms of attendance, whenever that happens again, is the fact that you never know if the stars are going to play. For example, you're a father and your son loves Kawhi Leonard. You live in Orlando. Kawhi Leonard only comes to town once a year. Now, are you willing to risk 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars on tickets for a guy that your son wants to see and you don't even know if he's going to play? A guy who's willing to sit games for load management? A guy who consistently misses games for rest? This was never an issue in the Jordan era. It's good to see LeBron James carrying this mentality at this stage of his career. And look, he's not the only one. Not all superstar players are like Kawhi Leonard or Kyrie Irving. Giannis is another example of a guy who plays night in, night out, rarely misses a game. I just wanted to bring what LeBron James is doing at this stage of his career, and more importantly, his response to rest to the media, to your guys' attention. Look, I know this singular thing is not going to draw any of you who have quit watching the NBA because of everything that happened last summer back to watching the league. I know it's not going to do that. But I felt that this was a step in the right direction. And it was only fair to call out LeBron for something positive since we've spent the better part of a year focusing on everything he's done that's negative. Now, what do you guys think? Is LeBron James leading other superstar players in the NBA by example with his commitment to playing damn near every game in the regular season? Love him or hate him, you've got to respect his grind and his work ethic. So let me know your thoughts. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys next time.